Welcome to Keep What You Earn, your judgment and jargon-free zone for entrepreneurs of all levels. Get ready to learn how to scale your business, save money in taxes, and create a business that grows your wealth. If it feels like the financial side of business is like eating your vegetables, well, then think of this podcast as the ranch dressing to make the process a little more enjoyable. My name is Shannon Weinstein. I'm a CPA and business owner on a mission to simplify money and empower others through knowledge. I hope this episode inspires you to take action, but remember that the information we share is for educational purposes only and is not individual tax advice. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start the show. So one thing I love about being in various business networking communities is we get so many good questions between that and our CFO on-demand program with entrepreneurs who are asking questions around their business, tax deductions, and so on. I get so many ideas for this show and so many pieces of input where there are really good questions. So number one, if you feel like you're asking a stupid question, you're not because very often... (laughs) Uh, I get people asking what they would consider stupid questions, not me. And what ends up happening is I end up doing the research and figuring out that the answer wasn't as obvious as maybe they thought, or it really isn't a stupid question. There's a lot to be interpreted and there's a lot to research. And it's actually really fun for me to dig into these new areas that maybe there's problems or situations I haven't tackled yet. So always take the opportunity to send me questions, especially if you're in our CFO on-demand program. And one of those questions that came up in a Facebook group I'm in was around being an author and how to treat the costs associated with their publisher when it comes to their taxes. Now, what you may be thinking is, well, okay, Shan, so yeah, I put, if I publish a book and I pay a publisher, wouldn't that be a pretty obvious just tax deduction, like expense? And the answer is, it's not obvious, but maybe. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use today's episode to explain to you my answer to this question. But I want, if you're an author or an aspiring author, listen to this and know that you need to have a conversation with your CPA slash tax preparer on this topic of how to treat any costs associated with producing, publishing, marketing, distributing your book. Because there's a little bit of a gray area here. And I'm going to explain why. So number one, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about and get really clear on kind of, I'm going to give you two different camps, but I know that there's some stuff in between here, right? There are a lot of folks in recent years that are releasing books, not with the intention of actually selling the book, believe it or not. Their intention is to market the book, generate enough buzz around the book to get on bestseller lists, and then leverage that credential for other initiatives in their business, whether that be direct sales to customers to establish credibility, get speaking gigs, get booked on podcasts, get booked on media appearances, and so on. So they want the exposure and the buzz around their brand. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. That is a very good strategy to do that, to establish trust, credibility, and your expertise. Now, here's the thing though. A lot of traditional authors make that their primary business model. So some of you are listening are authors by profession. You make all your money from your books, from the royalties and so on from your book. And again, nothing wrong with that. But what we're going to do is unpack how this might differ depending on which of these camps you're in, how your taxes could be affected. So number one, what we have to establish is what are you using the book for? Okay. Number two is what are the costs that you're going to incur? So what I advise this person who asked me about this, she had publishing costs. Basically, a publisher was sending her a bill for this package where they were going to publish the book, produce it, distribute copies, and they were going to also market. They were going to do certain marketing efforts. Now, I haven't seen the contract, but this was what was relayed to me, that they were going to perform certain marketing activities as well. And what I would recommend you do is really kind of slice out, itemize those things so that you can see, okay, here's what I'm really paying for, okay? And have all of that ready for this conversation with your accountant. Because here's how the conversation is going to go. Some accountants will err on the side of calling this a marketing expense. Okay. Some will call it a marketing expense. Because technically, if you're using the book from a marketing standpoint to establish credibility and to get on more shows and to make more sales, you're trying to do that in the short term to establish that credential. And in reality, your end goal 
is to establish that credential, which is much more of a short-term goal. Because if you've ever released a book, and I've seen, I know many friends who have, there is a massive effort and push within a about a one-year time frame. So let's say if you started writing your book in the winter, chances are you're going to release it in the fall, maybe the winter. So chances are you're probably going to le- release it, you know, I'd say nine to 10 months later is kind of the trend I'm seeing. So if you think about this, you write the book and the life cycle goes through to releasing it, it's generally around a year. But what we have to be mindful of is when are we really accomplishing our objective for the book? And if it's a short-term marketing push and the book is really just to get that credential, that bestseller credential, that's one thing. And I would then consider most of this to be an expense because the book, although the book will be available after that first year, I feel like a case could be made that that book is really getting promoted in that year. Like that's the season when you're going to be promoting it, when you're going to be leveraging it. And then after that, it becomes somewhat ancillary. Now, some may disagree with me on this, but then theoretically, if you are selling the book and you plan to make money over a longer period of time with the book, it's technically supposed to be an asset on your books, the publishing costs. Yeah, an asset that you actually depreciate, believe it or not. So if you think about it, it's almost like purchasing something that's going to make you money over multiple years, multiple periods of time. So in some cases, this can be treated like an asset. Now, we did do an episode called, Is It an Asset or Expense? Where I explained the difference between an asset and expense. But one of the major giveaways between these two is the term of benefit, I call it. So if the benefit of the thing you're doing is realized, is completed, is done in that first year or within that first year, then it's generally an expense. Now, painting with a broad brush here, but generally an expense. Now, It's usually an asset if you can generate more money from it over a period of time. Now, for many of you, your book may generate money over a period of time. But let's be real. How much are you really going to sell in year two, three, four, five after that initial book launch? And how much are you really going to be pushing it at that point? Like, are you really going to be actively selling it? Maybe not. And do you plan to keep inventory of the book? That's another question you have to ask yourself. Are you planning on keeping an inventory of the book and selling it? Now, many of you are going to keep boxes and boxes of the book to give away. Maybe you go on a retreat or a trip or to a mastermind and you offer to give away copies of your book to everybody sitting there. That is fine. I consider that to be marketing collateral. That's no different, in my opinion, than you having some type of business card or something like that that you're dropping on the table, which is a marketing expense. So when you think about it, when you get clear on, my intention is to really just use this from a marketing standpoint, and I'm really not looking to sell the book beyond the first year, then I think you need to have a conversation and have a case be made potentially to make that an expense. Now, the case for an asset is a little bit easier to make because a book doesn't expire exactly after a year. You're probably going to be selling it beyond. You just may not be pushing it as hard and it may not really matter to your business over the long term. Now, you have to look, and this is a very important aspect of this that I discussed with this person. I said, but listen, there's no right or wrong. There's no like what's better for you. So an asset versus an expense, there's no, I guess we'll say better way. Like it's not like you want an expense and you don't want an asset or vice versa. Both of them are just things that exist. Like those are the two options on how to handle it. There are two, there are left or a right in the fork in the road. Now, I don't know which one is better. They're just different. So you have to have a conversation with your accountant to figure out, hey, wait a second, should I be capitalizing, aka calling this an asset or should I be expensing it? How was the proper treatment, but also which one would benefit me more? If we were truly on the fence and could make a case for both, what is the more advantageous option for me as a taxpayer? That is a question you have to ask your accountant. Now, there are accountants who will say, oh, it's definitely expense. No question. There are accountants that will say, oh, it's definitely an asset. No question. But I want you to really, using what you've learned in today's episode, unpack that and say, hey, I think a case could be made for the alternative, but just in case, could we figure out which one is actually better for me and go from there and see if a case could be made for the more favorable option? Because 
sometimes it can work in your favor. When you are in those gray areas, you can lean in your own favor if you can make a really solid case for it. And my point being that it's worth the conversation. It's 100% worth the conversation and that discussion to be able to be open with your accountant on how things are being treated, but also to establish that you have a vested interest in how these things are treated from your business standpoint. So start that conversation, look into this for your book publishing, do a little bit of research if you'd like to, and make sure that you are always, always, always asking your questions to your accountant from a place of curiosity and making sure that they're able to answer those for you in a very clear and understandable way. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode and we'll see you soon. Hey, I'm so happy that you're enjoying daily episodes of the show. And if you want more bite-sized tips from me based on what I'm discussing with my clients and my team, text me the word daily to 860-609-6374. And I'll share daily tips to help get you into the CEO mindset and we can chat about how to implement them in your business. Again, that's the word daily to 860-609-6374. Want a little bit less than daily? Well, you can also text me the word weekly and you'll just get my Monday messages. Again, the number is 860-609-6374. Shoot me a message anytime. I cannot wait to chat with you. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your podcast platform. This small action goes a long way for podcasters to get our message heard by more business owners just like you. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to information about our guests and ways to get in touch with me. We'll see you on the next episode.